Good Friday afternoon, everybody. Come on in. I'm on the stove. I'm a cooking. I'm browning some butter here for my basmati rice. You know, I told you I started doing the basmati rice, and I love it. Um, put it in the pan, and I'm doing it just like it's rice pilaf. Oops. And what I like to do is just the brown. I just like that little browned flavor. I don't know what it is about that. <clears throat> Again, I think it reminds me of rice pilaf a lot. So I kind of sort of prepared it as such. So that's my cup and a half of uh, basmati rice and a half a stick of butter and a tablespoon of my um, truffled I think I got enough. Yeah, truffled um, cow ball. What am I trying to say here, y'all? So how are you all doing this afternoon? Hope you're having a God bless Friday and that you're not experiencing any of the weather that's going through the Northwest. Um, I'm telling you, we are, again, we always have something to pray for. Uh, we're praying for our sisters and brothers in those areas. Uh, I talked to my sister-in-law last night and she was letting me know that uh, in Memphis, where she is from, where a lot of her family still is, are uh, that they had some really, really scary weather there last night. So, we're going to pray for the people around that Memphis area, all through that region, and throughout the country, wherever that uh, inclement weather is taking place. So, again, we still have to remember to pray without ceasing, folks. We got to do it. Because I'm here to tell you weather, the economy, the virus, all manner of things are taking place around here. So we always have something to pray for. So we're going to pray without ceasing. And I've been uh, out in Texas, they're having some weather. So all our YouTube family in Texas, all out there, Ohio. Uh, we see you. We're praying for you. We're going to continue to pray for you. We just, we've called for everybody to just pray without ceasing so that uh, our sisters and brothers are out of harm's way. <clears throat> we've uh, lost a couple of people, as I understood this morning. I didn't look at it a, a lot this morning. You know, that kind of thing is upsetting because I know people all over the region, all over the area, all over everywhere, all over the United States and abroad in some cases. So, it, uh, you know how that goes when you hear those things, it's kind of heartbreaking. Okay, folks, so now I'm going to go ahead and pour my water, and this is a cup and a half of rice, and we're just going to start with just two cups of water. Ooh, that smells so good. Oh, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to do me a little study on basmati rice, because I'm just curious about that, that fragrance that comes off of it. That, that aroma, ooh, it, it just makes me just want to sit down and eat right away. And I love the texture of the rice once it's cooked, um, what it feels like in my mouth. So I'm going to put me a half a teaspoon because I'm making this to go with uh, some stir-fried chicken alfredo, okay? So I'm just going to do that like so. Now we got the rice going, and then what I'm going to do is just put the lid over, and it's just going to cook just like regular rice. Okay, put the lid on, and it is on its way. Make sure you watch it so it doesn't ball over, because maybe sit it like that for a minute. <clears throat> and then we're going to get back over here, we're going to start on our uh, chick stir-fried chicken and veggies. Okay, so happy... Uh, Black History Month for those of us who are celebrating. I, I, I'm bringing you all along, right along with me. So, okay, now we're going to quiet that down a little bit. So, we are still celebrating Black History Month and we'll be out throughout. You know, I tell you, I celebrate, obviously, Black History all year long <laughs> for obvious reasons. But we do the, um, I guess you call it the scripted, the official black history where it's declared throughout the country throughout the world is black history month so this dish here you know i'm gonna i'm gonna make it be 
uh, a commemorative dish as well because you know as African Americans in my home growing up as a child as a black child my mom made do with what she had and that was always the case because we you know we had uh, didn't have a lot but she made it like it was a lot so that's how I learned how to cook by looking at the things that she would put together that's why I'm able to put so many different things together I was just, you know, I, I knew that, you know, deep within, but then I kind of thought about it. And I'm thinking even right now, this is why I know how to put these things together. Because my mom, because some people are like, how do you know how to cook all this stuff? Who taught you how to cook all this stuff? Well, I learned it from watching my mother and my grandmother. And not specifically the food that they put together per se, but their technique, their way of putting things together. So I learned a lot from looking at them. And, of course, you know, I told you my husband <clears throat> was a chef unto himself. He could cook anything, and he did it well because he was also an eater. And his mom was a chef, so he learned it. Uh, he lived it. He taught me a lot of things about cooking. So we're going to get this meal going here. Yeah, I'm trying to get this grease. Uh, this olive oil is in my pan here. And what I've got is some... Um, this is one of those quick, easy meals. You know, I told y'all we're going to be doing more and more quick, easy things uh, to prepare. So what I'm doing here first, I've got some bell pepper, green bell pepper, red peppers, onions, and a little bit of celery. And I'm going to go ahead and put it in this hot, hot oil. Make sure it's really hot. Let it get a little bit hotter. But it's going to go into that oil. And I am going to season it up real good, and we're going to put the rice in there. And then I'm going to go ahead and prepare some uh, broccoli. So we're going to make this a one-dish meal in the end. So when you get ready to serve it up, it's all in one dish, and you just take a spoon and put as much as you want on your plate and enjoy. So I hope you all are having a God-blessed Friday. Hope you're not in harm's way as far as the weather. If you are in an area where the weather uh, is raging and stormy, Oh, you know, in Alabama, they had a tornado. Isn't God awesome that you, you know, to be raining in this region, snowing in another, and a tornado in another area? That's the kind of, uh, uh, that's the kind of life that we are in. That's what God can do. He can make all these different things happen at one time. And I give thanks and I give glory to God each and every day. I don't care what the weather is doing, what the economy is doing. I give God the glory for all things. Um, let me grab something over here. Because we know in anything that we do that we have to pray without ceasing. The word of God says, "Be and be joyful in all things. Give thanks unto the Father. This is what he desires us to do through Christ Jesus. And that entire scripture, that scripture in its entirety is in Thessalonians 5, uh, 6 through 18. I hope I'm saying the right numbers. I believe it's 6 through 18. 16 through 18. Okay, so, you know, <clears throat> when I'm sitting and I'm listening to scripture and I'm listening to songs of praise, songs of thanks, songs of giving homage, to the Father, I can't help but get excited. I just get so excited about the things of God. Um, yeah, I'm putting, I need, I didn't put enough, quite enough water in the rice. I'm putting a little bit more water into the rice. It needs a little bit more steam on it before we declare it done. <clears throat> But when we're giving God the glory for the things that he does in our life, we have to remember as we pray and give thanks, this is what God would have us to do, okay? So now I'm giving thanks unto all these veggies and to all this food that we get ready to make. So we're going to put this into a hot, hot skillet. Be careful now when you have that grease really hot. Be careful that it doesn't pop up in your face or anything like that. You know what? I bought this little cutting board here during the Christmas holidays, and I love it. I'm going to see all these year round. It has a little Christmas uh, motif on the end, but that's okay, too. 
So what I'm going to do here is just uh, stir fry these veggies. Get them all mixed up in the oil. And I'm just going to put about a couple of tablespoons of just butter on there. Keep that heat hot. Okay. Keep it as hot as we can get it. And of course you know that I season each one of my ingredients. And one of my ingredients that I'm seasoning it with is about a half a teaspoon of uh, my chicken bouillon. This is my ch uh, chicken bouillon. It's, set, it's, it's north. It's uh, caldo con sabor de pollo. I speak, we live in Spain for a little while, so I can still say it. I can still speak a little bit of Spanish to where people can understand it. So all it is is uh, chicken bouillon seasoning. Okay, so we're going to let these onions sort of sit off to the side like that. And then I'm going to go ahead and put my chicken in. My chicken is um, already cooked. It's that fajita chicken that you can buy to make fajitas from. It's that, uh, that John Souls food. I'm sure y'all have used those before. These are good. They come in chicken or beef. <clears throat> I had that. And, and you know what? I'm, one thing that I'm trying to do is go ahead and use things that are in my freezer that's been there a few months. So that's why I'm doing this today. And plus, I'm trying to cook lighter and quicker meals. So those John Souls uh, beef or chicken, those are very, very good cuts of meat. They make nice fajitas or stir fry like what I'm doing. Now I'm putting, this is the chicken. They come in pretty good sized pieces, and most of them are cut up <coughs> to make smaller pieces out of. The chicken is already done. It's actually already seasoned, so what I'm actually doing here is just heat it through and then when it gets to where I want it then I'll mix it in, in with the onion and then I'll pour in I've got some already prepared you know Alfredo sauce I know people say it's easy to make yeah it's real easy to make uh, you know with some seasoning some heavy whipping cream all of that but I happen to have some already made uh, I'm not one for reinventing the wheel I'm sure the homemade is probably just as good if not better it's not that I don't know how to make it, it's just that I'm making it convenient for me. <laughs> how about that? You know what? The older I get, the more I know I don't have to be the center of attention. Okay, people. I've got Classico Creamy Alfredo. This is a good brand. I like that brand. It does, does what I need it to do. It works for me real well. So... Hope you all got some stuff in mind. Are you going to do fish tonight? Are you going to do steak? Or what are you going to prepare tonight for dinner? This is going to be what Kareem and I are going to eat tonight. I don't know if anybody's coming by. If anybody's coming by, I don't know. So we're going to put a little onion powder on that. And of course, you know, we're going to put some garlic powder in there. I'm going to put a teaspoon of garlic powder. we got to have all the seasoning. I'm not going to have to put hardly any, any salt content in this dish because the chicken is already seasoned. The Alfredo sauce is seasoned. So I can put my uh, non-salty, as much of my non-salty uh, ingredients in as I like. Of course, I'm going to put the turmeric in and put my Indian seasoning in. I love these... Uh, the turmeric, I love those flavors because you know why? One of the reasons why I like them because they taste good, number one. And to me, now this is just me, they go into my uh, nose and to my skin and get in my throat and just make me feel really good. You know what I'm saying? So, we are incorporating Asian flavors, Italian flavors, good old American flavors. Again, that's that using what you got in your kitchen to do what you need to do situation, which is what I'm very good at because that was the way I was raised. Okay, so got this going. 
Oh wow, y'all, yeah, this smells so good. Okay, this needs to just heat through another few minutes. I got about another 10 minutes. I think on my rice, and then I'll come back. I'm going to transfer this to another skillet, I think. I think I am. And then I'm going to stir fry some broccoli just to lay on top of it to finish it off. So y'all hang on. Find you something to cook along with me, and I'll be right back. Okay, y'all, I'm back. I got my other skillet here nice and hot. And what I'm going to do right now... Of course, you know, I got my olive oil in the pan. It's really, really as hot as I can get. And I'm going, this is frozen broccoli, so be careful with frozen broccoli. I didn't have any fresh, so this is frozen. So what I'm going to do now, let's go ahead and put it in there. Okay, y'all, and hopefully most of the water will cook out of it. Usually it does. It may leave a little, little bit of juice in there, but we're not going to worry about that because we're going to cook it all the way down without getting that broccoli soggy. little onion powder on it, y'all know that. Basically the same, same as the same thing as the same thing. A little bit of a, uh, this is like half teaspoon. Size of the season, just sort of stir it around in there and let it, uh, just, you know, it's going to slow down because it was frozen. So, we're just going to let it cook as it will. And there, and our, our meat and veggies are already done. Our rice is done. Mmm, how about that? And that. Y'all excuse that. They kind of woke everybody up, didn't it? I haven't knocked the camera over in a long time. So I'm just going to let that, that's going to have to cook about five or six minutes and then I'm going to drain it. If it has too much juice, I'll drain it. I'm just going to use it to go on top of the stir fry. So hold on, and I'll be right back. Okay, we're back. The rice is ready. So what I'm going to go ahead and do, I'm going to put that rice right there. And we're going to toss it. I'm going to go ahead and turn the fire off. The rice is done. Okay. I thought I was going to need a smaller pan, but I need the bigger pan for this, so. Okay, right, here we go. And then we're going to put that, um, broccoli right on top. I, I'm not going to do this, the Alfredo. I changed my mind. I think I'll save that Alfredo for another day for some noodles or something. Okay. First. And now, and now, people. Okay. Because you know what I thought about when I thought about putting the, uh, just leaving it off, what I thought about, I think I want like a, a more of a sweet and sour sauce on there. Put all the rest of this rice in here. We're going to drizzle it. Okay. A cup and a half of rice. Let me get a nice pan. A very, very nice pan. Okay. There we go. Isn't that pretty? <clears throat> so we just got done with this. I'm going to take now and uh, I'm going to take the broccoli and just lay it on and just make it real pretty and festive looking. Okay? All around 
around, all around, all around. And then I'll just come back here to the middle and put a little pocket of broccoli. And make sure when you do when you stir fry your broccoli that you leave it sort of firm. We don't want it uh, soggy. So that's it, y'all. And I'm going to, like I said, I'm going to do a little sweet and sour sauce. So uh, I know we like the yum yum sauce or the sweet and sour sauce. Either one will go to sort of drizzle over it um, to give it just a little extra added. Oh, so how's that for a real quick? And this is truly one of those 30-minute meals, y'all. I promise it is. So hold on one sec for me. Okay, y'all, dinner is ready. Look at that stir-fried meal. Everything in one dish, the rice, the stir-fried chicken and veggies, and, of course, I got those uh, that stir-fried um, broccoli sitting right on top, and I'll probably garnish it with a little bit of uh, sweet and sour sauce. So we're going to have something nice, ice cold to drink, and... This one dish meal, you can have it on the table in 30 minutes, guys. So thank y'all for tuning in. Continue to pray without ceasing. Keep those prayers going up so the blessings will continue to come down. And pray for our family, our YouTube family uh, throughout the country who are experiencing um, this winter weather and even tornado in Alabama. Can you even believe it? North Carolina, east of North Carolina today. Our weather today has been 68 degrees. Now, tomorrow it's going to go back in the 30s. Who but God could change weather at the twinkling of an eye from freezing to a spring day. So, guys, God is good no matter what. Let us give thanks always in all things. So, until I decide to cook again, guys, love you so much. And remember, we're celebrating Black History Month. I'm going to give you just a little bit of a... Black History tip, just hold on one sec. Okay, my Black History fact for today is about dear sweet Miss Rosa Parks, who was born on this day in 1913 in Montgomery, Alabama. Uh, Miss Parks, of course, was very instrumental in uh, the bus boycott uh, back in 1955. Uh, I guess you could say she is the mother of integration as far as getting the... Uh, riding the bus you know what she did was to sit down on in a particular spot on the bus and refuse to move as you know you know back then african americans or black folk could not sit toward the front of the bus, or in the front of the bus and she did take a seat because she was tired and that day you know ironically she sat down because she was tired she had been to work her feet were hurt and i believe is where it went and uh she was just tired and once she sat down, she refused to get up. You know, I, I'm sure I can imagine. Why should I? I'm tired. There's an empty seat. I'm sitting down. So uh, there goes the beginning of the integration of uh, bus riding. So we thank Miss Rosa Parks. We salute her on this day. This is her birth date, February 4th, 1913. So we love you, Miss Rosa. I especially love Miss Rosa because she looks so much like my mom. Um, I, I believe I showed you all that picture of my mom uh, in my den, and I think, to me, she looks a lot like my mother, so I like looking at Miss Rosa. And this little book here uh, is called Quiet Strength, because Miss Rosa was a very quiet, reserved uh, lady, as was my mom. So I, you know, there's a lot of little things. She's fair-skinned, she's pretty, she had beautiful hair, she had that same smile. Uh, so my mom did not wear glasses, but she looks so much like Miss Rosa. So salute to you, Miss Rosa. We love you and thank you for all that you did in terms of integrating uh, bus riding. So again, guys, thank you all for tuning in. Pray without ceasing. Find some kind of black history to read. Uh, pass it on. Share it with someone uh, talk to some children about uh, African American history or anybody that you can uh, bend their ear a little bit because it's a rich, beautiful, interesting history. I mean, I've got so many things here in my home that I refer to and I'll probably never be able to read it all. Plus the stuff that's on the internet in the libraries and the schools, wherever you go. And if you ever get the opportunity, please go to Washington, D.C. and visit the African American uh, history Museum. So, until I decide to bring you another black, his, a black history fact, I'm going to say love you guys. Thank y'all for tuning in. Toodaloo!